Black Lives Matter has become a global movement from peaceful protests that involve thousands to painted murals that cover city streets. Co-founder Alicia Garza helped coin the phrase back in 2013 with a Facebook post. This fall, she was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People with fellow movement founders. Go Patrice Cullors and Opal Tumeti. Now the activist is sharing lessons on how to bring people together and create change in her new book. It's called The Purpose of Power, How We Come Together When We Fall Apart. And Alicia Garza joins us now. Alicia, hello, hello. I read your book over the weekend, and after reading your book, that is the perfect title, I want to say. Let's start with <laughs> July 13th. So July 13th, 2013. 17-year-old Trayvon Martin had been killed by a neighborhood vigilante who decided to take the law into his own hands. You wrote at the time, you cried and you were angry. You cried for his mother, Sabrina Fulton, and then you cried for America. And you wrote this, black people, I love you. I love you as us, our lives matter. You never intended for that to become a movement or a hashtag. What happened after that? Well, after that, Patrice and Opal and I got together and tried to figure out how to harness some of the energy that we were seeing online and get people to take action together offline. Of course, we are not the only people who were trying to figure that out. I think there were organizations across the country who were also trying to figure out how to get people to take action. But you didn't even know what a hashtag was, Alicia. No, I didn't at all. And, you know, I thought it was a pound sign because yeah. that's the generation I'm from. But I can say this, Gail, we didn't have any idea that this would spread globally. But I think we're really honored, and I know I'm honored to be the smallest piece of something so big and so powerful. And now it's been described by some, some critics who describe it as a terrorist organization, a Marxist movement, and you say that the words have consequences when it's portrayed that way. Well, it's definitely true. I mean, so many people know what happens online, but very few have a peek into what's happening offline. That's really what this book is about. And I do, I talk about the political conditions that we're living in. And under this administration, we have been subject to all kinds of attacks. I get death threats every day. I know Patrice does as well. And there are so many activists like me You're getting who are death threats, Alicia? This. Wait, you're getting death threats? Every single day, I get death threats. And so I think it's important for people to understand what does it mean for us to be the kind of country where this doesn't happen to folks who are trying to change rules that have been rigged against our communities for such a long time? And that's really what this book gets into. It's a, it's a reflection for me on the things that I've learned, the things that I'm unlearning, and the things I'm still learning. And I hope that it will be a helpful tool for people who are trying to figure out how to get started or pe for people who are trying to figure out how to keep going. I like how you say hashtags do not build a movement. People build a movement, and you can't sustain a movement with anger and grief. What do you mean by that? That's right. Well, I think there's so much emphasis that's placed on social media. And I get asked all the time, you know, how do I build a social media following so that I can build a movement? And I have to explain to folks, right, that movements fundamentally are first and foremost about getting more power to more people, but it's also about impacting people where they are and building relationships offline as well as online. You know, it's important for me for people to understand that what we're up against right now requires a deepening of our relationships. It requires us doing addition and multiplication rather than subtraction and division. Mm -hmm. And hashtags don't do that. Only people can accomplish that. Yeah, but for a lot of people, you know this, they look at the Black Lives Matter movement, they see looting, they see burning, they see destruction. I, I want you to address that, and I want you to address, too, because people are upset when they think Black Lives Matter is a point, a point you make throughout the book. Black Lives Matter does not negate the significance of people who are not black. That's because right. people will say so, all lives matter, which is true. <laughs> it is true, but if all lives mattered, then we wouldn't have black lives not mattering. And I think one of the things that I say in the book is that it's important for us to be able to tell our own stories. That's part of why I wrote this book. So many people talk about Black Lives Matter without talking to the people who are helping to push it forward. 
And when it comes to the perceptions of protests in this country, I mean, Vice News ran a story just a couple of weeks ago that said that 97 percent of Black Lives Matter protests are peaceful. And in the 3 percent where they're not, it's often because there are people who are not protesters who are bringing guns to protest. One of the things that we don't talk enough about is the presence of white militias in our protests, the presence of racial terror that is also being advanced by this president. We saw him on a national stage say to a white nationalist group to stand back and stand by. And so in yeah. my book, I talk about the stories that we have to tell that are more accurate right. and rooted in our communities. All right, Elisa, you said what happens when we come together. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Thanks so much, Gail.